an exploration of Kingdom Seismic Inversion with the Simulated Annealing Module. Hi, I'm Cathy Cowley from Equipoise Software. We work in partnership with IHS Market to develop the Kingdom Seismic Inversion, or KSI. This is a short YouTube video on SA Inversion giving a brief overview of the theory behind it and then a demonstration of the software. If you've previously watched our video on KSI coloured inversion, you'll know some more about the theory behind the inversion itself, so I won't be going over that again here. This will just be concerned with the SA inversion. Annealing is a heat process whereby a metal is heated to a specific temperature and then allowed to cool slowly. This softens the metal, which means it can be cut and shaped more easily. Simulated annealing is an analogous process applied to numerical modelling problems to find the global minimum value. To help you imagine this, imagine a 3D cube in front of you with mountains and river valleys. You could take a ball and throw it onto the top of a mountain and it would roll down randomly into one of the valleys. What simulated annealing does is it gives this ball the ability to test each valley until it finds the absolute lowest point. A parameter analogous to the temperature in the physical process is reduced to avoid the risk of the search getting trapped in a local minimum. So coloured inversion is quick and easy, but the more sophisticated inversion is the SA inversion, which generates a more accurate relative impedance and absolute impedance for QI work. The SA algorithm is shown on this slide. We have additional data types from the coloured inversion in that we require a wavelet and an initial starting macro model. The inversion is very sensitive to the quality of this wavelet so it's important to get a good correlation, but the inversion isn't so sensitive to the starting macro model, so this can be fairly loose. We combine the wavelet and the initial model to create a synthetic trace and we subtract this from the seismic data to get the misfit function, which is the difference between the two. We use the SA optimization to work on the difference and reduce this down to the lowest value. Apart from the seismic misfit, there is a model misfit too, which is the difference between the current impedance model and the background model. The model misfit constrains the inversion and reduces the non-uniqueness problem. In this process, we see if one trace matches the other, and does it meet the inversion criteria. So the inversion goes round and round and round through the no loop until it finds a trace that is a near perfect match and then it stops. In this video here we have the seismic trace and the estimated impedance low frequency model and from these we derive the estimated reflection coefficient which is convolved with the wavelet to generate our synthetic trace. We then subtract the synthetic trace from the seismic trace to give us the error trace. I'll start the video running now and at the bottom you can keep an eye on the number of iterations being run. Now what you see is the estimated impedance model is being perturbed randomly and the synthetic trace is starting to get some shape into it. As this runs through you can see as it gets to around 500 iterations you can see the trace is starting to line up, although there is still a lot of error. There's 500 coming up there. And you can see the synthetic trace has a red colour. This is showing that the perturbation is occurring over the whole parameter space. Now it will begin to go pinkish, and that will show that it's been constrained, so it cannot search so widely. It's going pink now. It works up through yellow and then eventually comes to green and blue. As we constrain it further, there it is going yellow. As it works its way towards 20,000 iterations. Each time the error is rounding down and down until we get to the end point where at nearly 27,000 iterations. There we have it. We have a synthetic trace which is a near perfect match to the original seismic trace. Now, the key thing here is that now we know the parameters that go to make up the synthetic trace. We have this highly detailed estimated impedance trace and this is what we will invert on. 
In this next video, we will see the normalised misfit versus the iterations, and we have the three seismic traces for reference at the top. We start off here with a near perfect error, but we quickly round the error down as we start to get some matches between the seismic trace. You can see on the left hand axis, the error is now approaching around 50%. Now at this point here at around 500 iterations, we hit a low point in the data. This demonstrates one of the key things with the SA inversion algorithm is that worse solutions will be generated as the iterations progress before it starts narrowing down and becoming better again. And as you can see, the general trend is narrowing down. When we move to the next temperature step, the pink level, there, we are using the lowest value found in the red level as a starting point and we still have energy to be able to see errors in the yellow and the green phases but ultimately the error is moving down and down with better and better matches to finally about 10% error. On this we get about 10% error since seismic data is inherently noisy so if it was to continue trying to work effectively you were just trying to invert the noise. So we can get a near perfect match with the synthetic to the seismic using this process. Okay, so let's look at the SA workflow. The inversion works through four screens. We have data that has been loaded for coloured inversion, the sonic log, the density log, and the time depth charts. And we then match the logs with the seismic, choosing an optimum trace to do this. We go through wavelet estimation, or if we are not happy with the correlation, we can import an external wavelet. Wavelets with four different formats can be currently imported into this package, SEGY, EPS, HRS and TKS. The synthetic to seismic scaling is computed automatically, the macro model is then selected and the various parameters are tuned and tested before being applied to the inversion to generate our absolute and relative acoustic impedance volumes. Right, without further ado, let's go into an SA inversion demo. So this will be a walkthrough demo using the Sooner dataset. So the first thing we need to do is select the SA inversion from the drop-down as opposed to CI inversion and we select the same data types as the coloured inversion. So first we select the well that we're using and we select the sonic log, the density log and the time depth chart used to calibrate and then the, we select the amplitude volume. So on this, the first of four screens is different from CI. What you're looking at is the impedance log, the seismic and a bird's eye view of the traces around the well. This is referred to as the log size match. Now the object of log size match is to find a best trace that correlates to the well for purposes of wavelet estimation. This trace is also used in seismic scalar estimations and determination of the inversion parameters. Now this is the black dot here and the other black dot shows the closest trace to the well. And cooler colours show a worse match and warmer colours show a better match and a better trace to be used for this matching process. Now we need to define the window of interest on the seismic which We'll set to 1200 and 1700 and we'll have a look around our inline and cross line traces close to the well. Note the PEP, the percentage or proportion of energy predicted or maximum predictability, is also a key parameter here in wavelet estimation. This is the proportion of energy in the seismic segment that is predicted from the log segment. So we can change the display to see more inlines and cross lines and to see if we can get an, an optimal trace to work with. There we can often see we get bright spots in the data where an optimal trace is selected so here we can press next. 
So we move to the next screen, which is the wavelet estimation, which is, of course, of key importance to SA inversion. We want to zoom in on the wavelet and then have a look at the correlation coefficient between the seismic and the synthetic trace. If it's over 0 0.7, and it is, it is OK to proceed. If you are in a situation whereby your correlation coefficient is less than 0 0.7, you can import a wavelet by pressing the import wavelet button from the Kingdom Suite, from ASCII pairs, from Hampson Russell, or a newly developed option here from SegY. However, our correlation coefficient is OK. Now, before we proceed with the inversion, let's just have a look at another couple of tabs on this wavelet estimation screen. We have uh, the Wavelet Spectra tab. Uh, this shows that once a wavelet is estimated, its spectrum is calculated and analysed. In addition, the wavelet is modified to a standard length of 63 samples and its waveform to a wrapped around form. This converted waveform and its spectrum are what are displayed on this tab. Now, another new feature of the latest release is the multiple wavelet option. I know in this, several wavelets estimated in either coloured inversion or SA inversion can be analysed and averaged and the amplitude and phase spectra displayed here. You can add dynamic wavelets estimated in the current job session or ASCII wavelets saved from a previous session. You can also add a mix of dynamic wavelets and saved ASCII wavelets. The only requirements for the input wavelets are that they must have a same length and sample interval. Statistical wavelets produced by coloured inversion can also be averaged here. So back to the log size wavelet screen. The wavelet has been automatically selected and the correlation coefficient is OK, so we can press next. And the seismic scalar evaluation screen comes up. Here we are able to again select the window of interest we want to work with and the final scalar value is computed automatically. Here is where we select the macro model, either from the survey or from a log, which is selected, and we move to the SA inversion screen. Zooming in, we see the impedance log in red, the macro model in blue, the inverted impedance in black with modified and external bounds, I'll just turn the bounds off and on again um, and I'll zoom in a little bit more. So you see here a corridor width which is the available search space for the inversion to search away from the macro model in order for us to get optimum values. The original seismic and reconstructed seismic can also be seen on this screen and the error traces. If we look at the inversion calculation property grid to the right, there are values that can be changed to try and reduce the error display still further if necessary. For example, reducing the width of the corridor. I won't describe what all the parameters do, but the maximum correlation is an important parameter. This is used to assess the quality of inversion, showing the cross-correlation value between the filtered log and the SA inverted impedance trace. Now, in this case, the error does not look too bad, so we can move on to applying the inversion to the volume. But before we do, we can look at the seismic section tab, which is set for 50 traces, either side of the synthetic trace in the middle. Now, this is a cross-section view of absolute impedance across the Dixon well. The log impedance is shown in the middle of the section for a better comparison. For a good inversion, we expect a good match between log and inverted impedance. Now this second cross-section is a view of relative impedance. Again, the well log impedance is inserted in the middle of the section. Because of the band-limited nature of relative impedance, the comparison is much more revealing than that of an absolute impedance. So you can see that the cross-section view is a useful QC tool in our software. And so we get to the apply the volume screen. 
Now in here you can put in names for the absolute and relative impedance volumes and synthetic trace if required too that you want to be produced. You can set up the trace start and end time or enter a constant time to follow a particular grid. Also line and trace range. The absolute and relative impedances can be used for structure interpretation and reservoir characterization. In addition, a synthetic seismic volume can be output, which is constructed using the inverted impedance and the input wavelet. In SA inversion, we also have batch processing, allowing you to utilize multiple cores on your PC. This data set is roughly 100 square kilometers. If you have eight CPUs that you can access to run in batch mode, then it would take about an hour to run. So when you are ready, press Invert Selected. This will take a while to run, so I'll bring up one that's already finished. So when it has finished, go into Kingdom to view your results. And within this section on the seismic, we can see the anomaly, and you can see the formation tops are within the bounds of the seismic, making it more difficult to pick on. If we first select the relative acoustic impedance, we can see that the formation tops are now on the interface boundary rather than the peaks and troughs, and we've also delineated this structure here. If we look at the absolute acoustic impedance, you can see that this has cleaned up considerably, and we have these very detailed areas or bright spots. If I zoom into this body and display a time slice, We can see that we have this sand body delineated like so, demonstrating a very high quality inversion. Here we also have a case study. Now within this section the company drilled on this location on an AVO bright spot. And oil came in and everyone was happy. They then drilled the second AVO bright spot and the well came in dry. So SA in inversion was used and a low porosity reservoir sand was identified. The impedance cube substantially improves the resolution of hard sands and it is hoped that mapping the hard sand distribution will aid locating higher porosity sands by juxtaposition, especially if combined with differential compaction mapping. So the SA inversion take home message here is that it's model independent, it's only loosely coupled with it, it's well independent and easy to use. It's a high quality quick look inversion that could save you the expense of having to do a pre-stack inversion. So that concludes our presentation and demo on SA inversion. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you require any further information, please contact us on the email on this slide. Thank you and goodbye.